Good morning, I'm Neva Redimanu and this is your morning news fix for Tuesday 21st of November. In this update, governing talks are turning towards cabinet roles and ministerial responsibilities. National Act and New Zealand First have been meeting in central Auckland hotels for close to a week to iron out a deal. Incoming Prime Minister Christopher Luxon has now completed policy programmes with the two parties. New Zealand First and Act just need to make sure that they are across each other's uh, policy programme and supportive of that, fully supportive of that, uh, which I'm sure will be uh, progressing well. Despite what he calls significant progress, Luxon won't confirm whether a government could be formed by the end of the week. Warnings climate change adaptation could become divisive if decision makers fail to involve the public. A new report calls for legislation to ensure local councils are engaging with communities while designing adaptation plans. The Helen Clark Foundation and engineering consultants WSP warn it will be critical for putting in place enduring solutions. Foundation Deputy Director Carly Mercia says adaptation will be disruptive, so it's important people are on board. At the same time, the Insurance Council is echoing calls for a greater focus on flood resilience. IAG, the owner of AMI, State and NZI, says the incoming government must make it a priority, given it's paid out a billion dollars since last summer for weather-related claims. Council Chief Executive Tim Grafton says it's a no-brainer, with weather events becoming more frequent because of climate change. He says the problems aren't just insurance related. Issues surrounding, you know, social disruption. People just do not want to be flooded and flooded and flooded time and time again. Warnings, more investigation is needed before streaming is ended in New Zealand schools. The Education Ministry, Teachers Unions, iwi Leaders and the Education Review Office unveiled a plan to end the practice earlier this year. It would mean students are no longer separated into different classes based on their prior learning by 2030. But in a new report, New Zealand Initiative's Michael Johnston says there isn't enough information on the benefits or negatives of streaming. And staying in schools, full support for Rangiora High School's pivot for modern open space learning environments. $1.5 $1.5 million has been spent to divide its flagship building, fitting 500 students into smaller, flexible classes. Students and staff found the facility too distracting to work in. And Secondary School Principal Association's Vaughan Quio says large open teaching spaces aren't always conducive to students getting work done. So a bit of a hybrid between single cell spaces and open and flexible spaces is probably better than one big open barn-like space. And support services are concerned about online gambling by high school students amid fear students could develop gambling addictions later in life. In sport, former Kiwis League captain Hugh McGahn is confused by reported calls by ex-players for New Zealand coach Michael Maguire to exit the role if he takes over as New South Wales mentor given the recent trouncing of Australia. Former Springbok 1995 World Cup winning lock, Hannah Stridham has died in a car accident aged 58. And six of the football shirts worn by Lionel Messi during Argentina's World Cup winning campaign last year will be auctioned via Sotheby's in New York, including the one he donned in the decider against France. I'm Neva Retimanu. That's your latest news fix. We'll be back with the next update at midday from the News Talk ZB newsroom.